Head over to thebestsongever.com and purchase our new hit, Together Again. It is a cover of Smokey Mike and the God King. That's Jeremy Boring and Michael Knowles. And with your help, we will smash our way onto the Billboard charts. From Polygon. Can Alex Garland's civil war somehow be apolitical? A bipartisan California-Texas alliance is certainly out there. I actually don't think so. In the initial trailer, when we when we uh, saw the brief map showing the breakdown of what this movie thinks civil war would look like, we said it's, a, it's absurd. We didn't have the full details. We're getting a little bit more details, and now it's starting to make sense as to what their vision of a civil war could be. Polygon writes, Ex Machina director Alex Garland looks like he will try to do the impossible with his new film Civil War. When his new film, Civil War, hits theaters in 2024, depict a second civil war in which the U.S., without directly engaging with the politics of why the war is taking place. Wait, uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry. Depict a second civil war in the U.S. without explaining why. It's not hard to see why Garland might want to avoid thorny connections between the movie and the very real politicians and political groups, blah, blah, blah. That said, it's still audacious to try to remove politics from even a fictional civil war. A fight typically born out of political disagreement that can't be resolved by any other means besides open conflict. Whatever disagreement is at the heart of the conflict, which the first trailer carefully avoids pinning down, puts California and Texas in the same boat, which sounds unthinkable at the present moment. And for that reason, a map graphic created based on the trailer has obviously gone viral. Well, here it is. And I actually completely agree with it. And uh, I completely agree with this depiction of what uh, they believe a civil war in the United States might look like. Now, the, the, the movie trailer we've seen so far we don't we don't know the movie but we'll see the movie but uh ignore the movie and let's stop and go back to colorado removing donald trump from the ballot what this could lead to and why it could lead to or be a component of what causes civil war i do not believe that trump's rock solid 40 percent support would ever abandon him if the way he is stopped is through illegal and unconstitutional matter measures and dirty politics if trump you know, announce he was retiring. People would be angry. They'd say, no, oh, but they would be angry with Trump. And mm -hmm. they try and find someone of a vague. If the Democratic Party uses obscure interpretations and, and, and novel interpretations of the law to remove Donald Trump and then tries to hold an election without Trump after even one state removes him, the likelihood of some kind of civil conflict becomes substantially more real. So let's take a look at this map. Republic of California, Second Republic of Texas. When you look at this map in and of itself, the vision of what could happen to this country actually makes a lot of sense. In the film, they mention that the, they, what do they call it? The, uh, uh, the California-Texas Alliance or something like this. The Western forces are heading towards D.C. You have the Florida Alliance. This is their map from the film. Let me, let me break it down for you what I think is going to happen in this movie. So there is some kind of political disagreement resulting in what appear to be the blue states breaking off. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, remaining loyal. And uh, I, I have it backwards. And the red states are breaking off. It, the, the view of this film is that the more conservative areas are the ones that are going to secede for some reason. So, of course, you end up with northern states, which lean red, and to Washington and Oregon, because they are very red outside of the cities. They go Western forces. They're outside of the United States. The Florida Alliance is the is the traditional traditional South minus uh, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. But of course, this is much this is Southern. This is more conservative leaning. Texas, well, they were their own republic, so they secede and say we're doing our own thing. California has the Cal Exit movement. They say we're doing our own thing. So what is a Texas California alliance? It's a, it's just that it would be like the U.S. and the U.K. aligning on a military operation. We don't share a government. You can make an argument about NATO, I suppose, but we don't actually share an active government. Texas and California aren't actually functioning under one president. They're in an alliance to prevent the old United States from taking over their states. So Texas says, we don't care for the way you live your lives, California. California says, we don't like what you do, Texas. We both agree we do not want D.C. to send their troops into our territory and take us over. So we'll work together. Western forces and Florida Alliance probably agree politically, but are split by states that are in proximity to deep blue and more heavily controlled uh, uh, loyalist territories. I think the other thing, the other thing to consider that we don't see in this movie is the, uh, the potentiality of where military bases are and where uh, weaponry is stored, which could result in the, the current, you know, the states you see being loyalist or uh, uh, having seceded. There's basically what well, we got five factions in this. 
based on everything we're seeing now, I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's plausible. Yeah, I, New York, you know, I, I grew up in New York and most of New York is also red though. You know, I feel like cities would secede. But or New England happen. is so deep blue and it's it's so population dense. It makes sense that these states are are, are locked in. I mean, yeah. obviously Pennsylvania is purple and, and yeah. Ohio is purple. West Virginia is 86% Trump supporting, but small population. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they Look, if anything happened, the first civil war, what happens to Maryland? Maryland's a slave state. Yeah with tremendous Confederacy sentiment. So Abraham Lincoln says, just start arresting the politicians. Mm. And they, they, that's what happens. They round up like, what was it, like 30, 30 or so, between 20 and 30 yeah. uh, state reps from Maryland, just because of their political views, lock them up. You know, one of the things that, that happened with the, with the, you know, the Civil War that happened in reality, like they were trying to secede. What happens if like there's not really a, a movement to try to secede there's just f like the the political strife that we have because again mm -hmm. we've talked about how the you know divide in the US goes right through grandma's kitchen you know yeah. it, it's not not regional anymore right. so like Urban what school. what does it mean to but it but you know, and and it, but it, but it wasn't what it wasn't the first the, the first american civil war was not regional Mar well, I mean, maryland delaware were slave states and and they're north of DC. There was still there was still clear. There was line. Not, I mean, okay, fair the point. North and the south. The Mason Dixon line. Yeah, yeah. But but the point the point is it was the the political sentiments were divided. Maryland, Delaware, slave states sure. north of DC had no choice but to be in because of geography. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's and that's a technicality. Virginia and I, I believe North Carolina were like we are not interested in Confederacy when the first secession wave happened. Yeah, and then the war starts. And then you start to see sentiments shift again. So what is? I guess I'm 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 trying to conceptualize what it would what it possibly would look like, you know, without the secession of you know states. Because I don't know that there's going to be like any other civil war. You you, so you, you you don't need a you know back then. I I love this line because not only was it in National Treasure and Nicolas Cage is based AF. Um, I don't know politically. I'm just saying he, I, I like his movies. He's great. Uh, but there's there's a line where they say, and this is true. I, I I I read about it before the Civil War. People would say around, in other countries or in this country, the United States are. Yeah. After the Civil War it was the United States is. is yeah. It was one country. So so at the time a state seceding was like it would it's like Brexit. Yeah. You know, now we wouldn't see that because people don't view these so these states as sovereign nations no. unto themselves. They view them as just regions of a country. It would look more like Syria or Spain or or any other traditional civil war we've seen throughout history before the United States uh, entered its civil war. But I think a really great example of what you can expect is actually in this map from this film. How is it that Washington and Oregon are part of the western forces when you have Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, I mean, these are Utah. These are these are more right leaning. Uh, not Iowa, but uh, these are more right leaning. But hold on, Minnesota. Minnesota is fairly Democrat. It's because conquer. You will have powerful military forces in certain areas, a lot of weapons in Montana, and they decide these are the territories we control, and they expand and lock up control of these states. That's it. Oregon, Portland, and Seattle as far left as you can go. Someone made the point on social media, they expect the narrative to be that the Western forces immediately captured and occupy Portland and Seattle. And the, the city, it's the ruins of Portland after the Civil War is just absolute chaos Have with far been, left forces. It's already pretty ruined right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now add far leftists with machine yeah. guns, you know, fighting with Western forces trying to lock up the coastal region. Yeah. I mean, that, what kind of scares me about this is that politics is downstream from culture and right now we've got really heightened tensions that one a court just came in and said hey we're going to take away your democratic process mm -hmm. so tensions are running high the regime always kind of does these two for ones where maybe the the court case will work they'll get trump off there or maybe it will fail in court trump has to expend a bunch of resources a bunch of people get really really mad yeah. and do or say something that then allows them to turn the full scope of the national security state on them biden's already said mm -hmm. that trump supporters the number one threat right. to national yeah. security so the whole state apparatus is already tooled towards going after people who disagree with the state yeah. i would just say everybody chill out yes. work on ballot harvesting don't take you want to watch the show watch the show but we should be encouraging people to follow ramaswamy's lead unity and stay focused on the actual goal it, it's yeah. worth pointing out that a green beret is telling you that 
Yeah. <laughs> like he, the guy that the guy that has has been trained to go into countries and destabilize them and and train local forces how to fight. <laughs> I've, see, I've seen a few civil wars and most of them are still ongoing and most of them are pretty horrible. I mean, between Iraq and Yemen and Syria, right. like it's nasty stuff and it, people might say they want that when they're frustrated, but it's nothing we ever want to see to here. To some degree, do you feel like like as I'm having flashbacks thinking of what lockdowns were like in autonomous zones and yeah. people being murdered yeah. and fires, right? Like I people, feel like we're kind of there. But, I mean, already to they, a degree. They, we have during the yeah, for sure during the riots. I mean, the Chaz was a oh, real thing yeah. in Seattle. There there was a warlord was running in the Georgia. Thing. They killed there some murders. Yeah. Where is yeah. your first deployment as a Green Beret? Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Iraq in 03. So I, I got there. We took down Saddam. Um, Saddam ran. We didn't get him initially, but the regime kind of fell and there was kind of a calm. And that's when we really started messing things up. Uh, it, when, <laughs> when we fired the entire bath party yeah. and drove that rift, I mean, just watching that break out. And, and at first it was all just channeled kind of against us and sort of the Iraqi government. But as we got into 2006, 2007, when the Iraqis were really at each other's throats, and that's still ongoing to this day, like that, when they stopped targeting us and started targeting each other, and every morning you'd wake up and you'd see people with their hands tied behind their back with bailing wire, their you know hands mm -hmm. swelled up like Mickey Mouse balloon. I mean, just wow. like horrific stuff. And this was like neighborhood by neighborhood. And these people had at one point in time been neighbors together. If you talk to yep. Iraqis, they were just yeah. like, this was street by street. This was sect by sect. It's... It's nothing we want to see here. Were you and, doing and 20 years? It's, yeah. It, and, and it's ongoing. Still going. People need to understand when we look to the American Civil War, our view of Civil War is completely yes. incorrect because that was different. If we actually had some kind of legitimate Civil War, we're talking decades. Yeah, absolutely. You, your, your children yeah. will be born in this and they will grow up in it and then one day fight in it. You yeah. think that there are people that are that are at each other's throats now? Wait until the killing starts. I don't know. Wait until the blood feud starts. That's wait, wait, goes, yeah. you know, wait, wait till the one. Yeah, wait, wait till it goes Hatfield McCoy. Can't yeah. let it go. And yeah. then yeah. you add more and more yep. and more to the mix, and it just so, so yeah. Yeah. it could be something as simple as this. How does a civil war start? The political tensions are there. We are standing on a powder keg. Well, we've already had with the Chaz Chop, people were killed. We already had a Trump supporter, Aaron Danielson, in um, what was it, Portland or Portland? Portland. Portland. Yeah, yeah. Portland. Shot and killed yeah. in the street for no reason. Now there been, it, there was, was uh, it was the DOJ. Mm -hmm. DOJ went after that guy, Michael Reinel, mm -hmm. and he is no longer alive. And that seems to end it. I wonder if the reason why they went so heavy handed after this guy was they knew that if he was let go, you could start a blood feud, which would result in like gang like retribution and, and revenge killings. But let's say that we're at the point of heightened political tensions in 2024 with Trump already being moved, removed from Colorado. And you get uh, someone shoot someone else. Leftist shoots and kills a conservative. Can, his brother says these guys in, yeah. in Colorado, they're in Oklahoma. Yep. I like Colorado, Oklahoma is an example I like to use. And they say they killed my brother and they fled and the police and the, the government won't do anything about mm -hmm. it. So they get a posse. They go into Colorado. They get revenge. Yeah. Now that guy's dad says these, these psychopaths from Oklahoma stormed into my, my home and killed my son. So he gets a posse. But now he's not after one guy. He's after seven. Yeah. Then you get seven people killed. Then the brothers, fathers, and friends of those men say, this fight's getting crazy. We need help. Yeah. They call in, look, look, maybe it starts militias. with Neighborhood Watch, militias. Yeah. I mean, then all of a sudden you've got people lining up on the border holding guns. Yeah. And then the Colorado people come over and say, John Smith, now, turn him over and his men. And they say, never going to happen. They raise arms. Who mm -hmm. knows? I'm not, I'm not saying it's a guarantee. It's, but these are possibilities. It seems like in the past, at some point, unfortunately. it's always something small like that. You never know what it's. It's all right. un, when, when you set the tensions this high. Yes. It's all unintended consequences. Yeah. In the that. past decade, there has all there has been one standoff with the um, you know with the people and the feds, the Bundy, the Bundy, the Bundy Ranch, Bundy's, yeah. Yeah. and the feds backed down because they didn't want to get into a gunfight with the Pete with right. the with you know dudes with rifles because mm -hmm. that just looks bad. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. bad all before. around. What they've been there before? Yeah, you know, it's just <laughs> yeah. bad all around. Yes. But that's happened already once. Right. The feds have not forgotten about that. And Absolutely they don't not. like, th it's not like they, they just blow that off. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let that happen again. Right. You know, th the, the, the apparatus that was designed to find terrorists that was honed to be able to find the dude hiding in the mountains, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And we've proven that it's basically, you know, the, there's not really anywhere you can hide from, from mm -hmm. the federal government. You know, like that that apparatus is turned onto the American population currently. It's been yeah. like that for nope. a minute with I, Operation Northwoods. Yeah. Right. You know, I they, think, they're bloodthirsty. I think a very important distinction as well is 
one of the mistakes this film makes with this map, state borders are meaningless. Yeah. 100% meaningless. Mm -hmm. So in Colorado, you've got a, a northern district trying to secede and join, uh, who, who's, who's north of them? Which state is that? Is that uh, Wyoming? Wyoming, yeah. They're trying, I think that's what they're trying to do. You've got California trying to secede and join the state, create the, create the state of Jefferson or greater Idaho. So Northern Cal Republic of California would not look like this. The Republic of California would look like a thin sliver along the coast. A lot of people assume California, you know, look, the conservatives and the farmers are in, are the eastern parts yeah. of, of California. Liberals are in the western and southwestern areas. You go north, it gets more conservative. That country would rip itself in, in, into, into pieces. Yeah. So you look at all these other states as well. The loyalist states probably would retain their form in the bulk in the New England area because they're not a conflict with each other. But if you go uh, over here where you've got three factions all surrounding, uh, you know, w including Nevada, yet Nevada would not exist. California would instantly annex territories trying to seize control of water reservoirs and things like that. And the Western forces would take the northern part and fortify it to bolster the defenses of their own territories. Nevada would be ripped into a million pieces in, based on this map. But I guess people might still instinctively or reflexively call it Nevada. The border is more of a geographic marker unless, than yeah. a unless declaration like of the, jurisdiction. The state has deployed a national guard to like actually in, reinforce a border. This uh, is a wild map just because of, of Utah. Mm. Like, how would that function? I mean, right. that's that's a mass. Like, see, this is the problem. These borders are are impossible. A that enforcing that border is 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 impossible. This state would be, you, you got to put dotted lines through it where it's a split state. Maybe the movie's a pro wall film. Yeah, there's a Everyone big, they build walls. a big wall. Yes. Nevada's just one big, perfect 30 <laughs> yeah. foot wall all it's around the entire a labyrinth state. labyrinth by the end of the movie. It's like walls, yeah. And then Trump's and face over it. It turns out to be a prequel to Maze Runner, and it's like, we have no idea. We have no idea. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.